<clears throat> All right, hello everyone. This is the half Torah of this week's Torah portion. The half Torah is a portion which is read after the finishing uh, on Sabbath, on the Shabbos in synagogue, after the regular Torah portion is read, which this week it's Chaye Sora, talking about what happened after Sora died, and it ends with Abraham dying. That's the end of it. <clears throat> and uh, the Haftor is something similar to this. This is a custom which has already been going on for like 2,000 years, something like that. So the, 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 what's called the Haftorah, it's usually something similar, a similar topic at least, or some way, to the one of the topics or more of the, um, the Torah portion, usually of the Torah portion. Sometimes it's it's it, like in the seven weeks of comforting, it talks about usually prophecies. It's prophecies of Isaiah talking about how Hashem is comforting the Jews and saying he's never going to leave them, and etc. Okay, here we're learning. Usually it comes from the prophets, but here's a case where it comes from the Book of Kings. What is the Book of Kings? There's two books of Kings. The Book of Kings is it begins with the death of King David. <clears throat> There's the book of Samuel. That's all the miracles that Samuel did and how he picked King Saul and then how he rejected King Saul and he picked King David and King David consolidated the kingdom and he became the first king and he laid the plans for the Holy Temple. <clears throat> and then King David passes away. King David dies. That's like after the Jews have, uh, let's say, like something like 450 years after the Jews, um, for something like that, they had left Egypt. The King David stood up, and then his son, King Solomon, built the temple. Okay, now we're talking about the last days of King David, which is a sort of like the topic of this week, because it's talking about the burial. It begins with the burial of uh, Sora, and in the end, it talks about the passing away of <clears throat> Abraham. So this is talking about also the passing away of King David, but there's a little bit of an intrigue and uh, going on over here. So let's go. Ready? It says like this, Amalek David, King David. So this is on the first, the beginning of the book of, of Kings. The King David was old and he was coming in days. This, there's also a sentence this week's Torah portion, excuse me one minute, that it also talks about says the same thing about Abraham. Avram Zakin Bob Yamim. He was old and he was coming in days. This is the King David was old. He was King David, he was old and he was coming in days. In other words, he was he had fulfilled all the days that God had allotted to him. It says that King David was supposed to have been born, stillborn, but he got 70 years from Abraham. I mean seven, I'm sorry, 70 years from Adam. He got 70 years from Adam, and he also got years from the lives of, um, <clears throat> of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? They all, instead of living uh, the full lives that they were supposed to, they gave they a certain amount of their lives to uh, to King David. So King David had 70 years from Adam, and he also had another 70 years, which that's different spiritual and physical, whatever, from the Abbas. In any case, the time has come. That's it. And near to the end of his life, he had he didn't just die suddenly in the middle of the street. He was getting old. They covered him up with garments. And it didn't help. His bodily heat was leaving him. And they said to him, his servants, let us find a virgin young girl. She can stand in front of the king. And she can, they say, warm the king up. Now the king did not, he didn't have sexual relations to her with her because he already had 18 wives, and you can't have more than 18 wives. So he, and you can't have relations, sexual relations with a woman without being married to her, either with a, a marriage document or without a document, that's called a pilagish. And so she said, it'll be 
Sochen, it should be like an attendant. Veshachva becheka, she can lie down with him, becham, and it'll be, she'll warm up the kin. V'yavakshu nara yafa, so they looked for a beautiful woman, bekol gavul Yisrael, and all of the boundary of Israel. V'yimtsu at avishag ha-shunamit, they found avishag ha-shunamit. V'yavu, v'yavu otah l'melech, and they brought her to the kin. Anavar Yafa Admo. She was very viewed, very beautiful. Patila Melch Sochenis, and she would serve him. She laid with him. And she also served him. But Melch Lo Yudaba, the king did not have any sexual relation with her at all. She was in no way his wife. She was just a serv- serving him. So she didn't have relations with him. But Adonia Ben Chagit. Now the king had a lot of sons. And some of his sons, and earlier, one of his sons in, in, had made a rebellion against him. And that was uh, Absalom. Absalom, he made a rebellion. And uh, earlier before that, Absalom had killed another one of his sons, which is called Amnon. Absalom, his son, killed another one of his sons. And he had these from various wives also, King David. So it said... Adoniyahu, he was the only one that was left alive. He was of the oldest. He was not the only one. He was the oldest of those that were alive. So Adoniyahu, he was the son of Hagit, one of King David's wives. And um, he elevated himself, Lomar, to say, Ani Imloch, I will rule. I want to rule. Vayaslo Recheb, he made himself like a big chariot. A beautiful, you know, chariot. Oh, prashim, and all sorts of like horses or horse cavalry. The chamishim is rotel for another fifty people running before him. Below atzavo, but he did not take advice. I'm so. Okay, Velo Atzavo Aviv Miamav. And his father never like held him back. He never refrained him. He never questioned what he did. Dave, King David never questioned anything that he did. He was very handsome. And he was born after Absalom. After Absalom was born. And like I say, Absalom had already been killed. Absalom, Absalom made a, a war against a rebellion against King David, and he got killed from Yoav at Surya. Yoav ben Surya, I'm sorry. Yoav, who was King David's uh, chief of staff, tremendously brave man, but he did a couple things that King David didn't like. And he would you're gonna see, he was sort of afraid that maybe whoever took over from King David might take revenge on him because of what he did. In fact, that's what's gonna be. We'll see. So this Adoniyahu, the son of King David, he spoke with Yoav, the chief of staff, King David, the general, Ben Surya, and also in Aviatar HaKohen. Aviatar HaKohen, he was one of the Kohanim, the, the priests. Vayazru. Now at that time, the Holy Temple was in, what was it? It was in uh, Gibbon. Gibbon, right? Yeah, Gibbon. And so he spoke to Aviatar HaKohen, and they decided to join together with Adoniyah. Adoniyah, he says. He calls him Adoniyah. So, but Sadok, but there were two people. One was Sadok Cohen, and Ben Yahu Ben Yuyada. He was also a, a big warrior. And Natan Anavi, Natan was a prophet. Vishimi. And Shimi, who was the head of the Sanhedrin, in the end, we're going to see Shimi. In the time of, of Absalom, Shimi was a, became an enemy of David, but he came back to David. Vorei Agiburim and his friends, the men of war that were with King David. They didn't go with Adonio. He didn't invite them. So Adonio, meanwhile, he's celebrating his coronation, his self-coronation. But he's, King David is old. He's going to die any moment. The Yizbach Adonio, Tzonu Bakar, and Adonio sacrificed 
sheep and uh, oxes, mori umri, and fattened oxes, in Evan Azochelet, on this place called Evan Azochelet, it was by some river, Asher Eitzel Ayan Ragel. It was by a place called Ayan Ragel, which is Yerushalayim. Vayikra et kol achav b'nei and he called all of his other brothers, and others, all the other sons of King David, because he was the oldest. The call on she Yehuda and all the people of Yehuda, the servants of the king, and also, like we said, Natan and Navi, Natan the prophet, prophet Natan, and Benio, and the Giburim. Okay, but, but I'm sorry, you can't, all the servants of the king, but Natan and Navi, Natan the prophet, and Benio, and all the other strong men, and also King Solomon, who was his brother, he didn't call. Now, why did he call all of his other brothers, but he didn't call Solomon? Because he knew that Solomon, Shlomo, he was the son of, of King David's favorite wife. King David's favorite wife was, <clears throat> was uh, Bathsheba. Now, Bathsheba was the whole story where King David, uh, she was married. She had been married, and King David sent her husband, who was Uya Hachiti, to war to get killed. He put him in the front. And so this was considered to be a sin, even though the fact is it wasn't a sin because he was really uh, guilty. He had made a small rebellion against the king and he spoke directly in front of the king, uh, rebellious words. And he was also, a, how do you say, a, a traitor to the king, this Uriah Hachiti. So King David, in a way, so King David put him. So it wasn't really a sin, but King David always considered it to be a sin. And anyway, this, this the, the, uh, but it was worth it to him to give birth to Shlomo because he knew that King Solomon, he was going to be the. So now here we got, uh, we have Adoniyahu is coronating himself. He has all the people of all of these friends and this, and um, all the people of Yehuda, of Judah, right? They're all behind him. And he's got Yoav, the king's uh, the chief of staff. And uh, these other important people, like Tzadok coin, they're all with him. And Natan and Navi and ben he didn't call. And the other people, he didn't call. Okay. Now the things are coming to, to a head, right? Bayomer, Natan, Natan said to Bathsheba. Bathsheba, that's King David's wife, right? His favorite wife. He has 18 wives. He says, the, the, Bathsheba was the mother of King Solomon. And he said, Halo shamataki amelech Adonio ben Chagit. Didn't you hear that Adonio, the daughter of Hagit, is making himself a king? But ba, ba Adonino, David, and he didn't even tell his father, King David. So Natan says to Bathsheba, we've got to put a stop to this thing. The people of Yehuda are all behind Adonio. They think that King David agrees. But uh, so now, so Natan, the prophet, he gives advice to Bathsheba. <clears throat> Go, and I'll advise you, give you advice what to do. Malti at Nafshech, you can save yourself and the son of King Solomon. Because they were both worried that if Adonai becomes a king, as he might put them to death, they'll find some sort of reason to put uh, them both to death, because they would be a threat to his throne. Or at least he would exile them. So I'll tell you what to do, says Natan Anavi. Go to the king, David Omar Ta'alav, and say to him, Hello, Atar and Melech. Didn't you promise La Lamatecha to your your servant, in other words, to her, to Bathsheba, and that Shlomo, your son, will be a king after me? and he will sit on the throne. Why is it that all of a sudden Adonio, he's the king? He's He's still speaking. Ima Melech. This is this is all the, the advice that Natan is giving to her. He said, you go to the king and say, your majesty, I thought that my son was supposed to be the king. Shlomo, did he do something wrong? Why is Adonai being king? And when you're in the middle of speaking, says Natan to Bathsheba, they're planning this thing. When you're speaking, so I'll come and I'll be maliti at the barakha. Now I will verify your words. Okay, so here it goes. So they did it. Bathsheba went to the king, to his 
room, the Amalek is arcane mode, and the king is very old. By the way, this we sing this. There's a melody to sing this thing. Avishaga Shunamit and this beautiful woman, Avishaga Shunamit, she is serving the king. But he called Batsheva, and Batsheva bowed down, and she what do you say, prostrated herself. Vayomer, he said, Amalek. Vayomer, Amalek, and the king said, what, what, what happened? What are you bowing down? What's going on? Why are you here? But Tomer, lo, and she said, I don't need. My master, you swore in the name of God to me, your maidservant, Ki Shlomo, Ki King Solomon, your son, he's going to rule after you. That's what you say, he's going to rule after me. And he'll sit on my throne. And now, here, Adonio, he's the king. Didn't you know that? I mean, is this with your agreement? Not only that, but Yizbach Shoromari. And uh, Adonio, he's sacrificing oxen and fattened cows and sheep with a tremendous amount. But he's calling also all of your other sons, the Aviatara Cohen and Aviatara Cohen and Yoav Tzara Tzava, they're all with him. Huh? What's going on? Say, yeah. Well, the Shlomo, the Shlomo, he didn't call. He didn't call you and King Solomon. But I don't hear and you. Any call Israel? The eyes of all Israel are on you. What are you going to do? La Hagid Lahem Mia Shavaki say who really should sit on the throne uh, after you? Maybe you agree with what I don't know is doing. So if so, you know, I'm, I have nothing to say. But yeah. And it will be that when she's uh, is still talking, and it will be that when you go to your fathers and when you pass away, because that's the whole theme here, what's going on? King David is laying on his deathbed. Then we are going to be ruled as sinners, right? That we declared ourselves to be the rulers. Hina, behold, Odenim, she's still speaking, she's in the middle of speaking with the king. But Natan Anavi bo and came, Natan Anavi. He also came. He came in the middle of her speaking. Something like Eliezer, he was in the middle of speaking, and all of a sudden Rivka came. The Yagid Lamelech and and Natan Anavi, Natan the priest, Navi, the, 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 the prophet, the prophet Nathan, I guess they call it in English. Nathan the prophet, he came. And he said to the king, Hine, not on a navi. Here I am, not on a navi, but Yavo, Lifne Amelech. And he came in front of the king. No one said, She said, I'm sorry, again. But yet they, they announced, his announcers announced, Here is Nathan, not on the prophet. And he came in front of the king and he bowed down on his face on the ground and he said, I don't need a melech, my master, the king. Ata, Marta, didn't you say, Did you say, I don't need a melech, acharai? Did you say that Adoniyahu, your son Adoniyahu, that he should rule after you? And he's going to sit on my throne? Because Adoniyahu, he went down today and he sacrificed also of oxes and fat cows and sheep. And he called all the other sons of the king, and to all the high ministers of the war, and to Aviyahu, Eviatar coin. If I said Tzaduk coin before, I made a mistake. Eviatar coin, and they're all sitting and they're all drinking and they're yelling out, "Long live the king at Anio. The Li and me says nothing. Anovi, not, not the prophet. Prophet nothing says, "I, uh, your servant, and to Tzaduk coin, and to Ben Yo Ben Yuyada, the your the, the the chief of staff, and also to King Solomon." We didn't get called. Like Solomon is the only son of yours that wasn't called, and we weren't invite, invited because we're all loyal to you. The inmate that in Melech, if this came, thing came from you, for the data, and you didn't let us know who's going to sit on your throne, a Melech Acharav, could it be that that's what happened? That you that you really want Adonio to sit, and you just for some reason didn't tell all of us. If so, we accept it. Ayana Melech David and King David said, please call Batsheva. Batsheva, she must have left the room, so he's calling her back. She stood in front of the king, and she stood. And the king swore and he said, 
Chai Hashem. I take an oath to God. I share Pada et Nafshi that saved me from all of the enemies that I've had my whole life. Ki kasher nishbati lach, just like I swore to you by the name of God, the King of Israel, the, the, the God of Israel. And I said that King Solomon, your son, he will be ruling after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. That's what I'm going to do today. And, and, and she, he swore, everybody heard it, and it was official. But Tikod Batsheva and Batsheva bowed down, Apayim Arts, face to the ground. Batishtachu Lamelech, and she supplicated herself, what is she, to the king. And she said, Yechi Adoni Amelech David Olam. May the king live forever. The king David should live forever. And this is where the Hasid Chabad also got this idea to say, Yechi Adoni no Marina Rabbi Amelech Mashiach, the Olam Ved. May the king live forever. Maybe king, I don't, Yechi Adoni, long live the king. He's on his deathbed. He says, Olam, forever. So, so one meaning is, is that. Uh, you know, he'll live on through King Solomon. Uh, his rulership will be continued King Solomon. Another is, is that we say, in, when we make the sac- sanctifying the moon, we say, David, Melech Yisrael, Chai Kayom, that King David lives and exists forever. So, and any, however it is, King David certainly is still alive in one form or another. And this was the attempt to usurp the throne after he died. And sure enough, it didn't work. And that is the end of this week's Torah portion. And it continues on that King David says, call Tzadok Cohen and the, nothing the prophet and Ben Yo Ben Yoda. And they brought him in front of the king and they said, okay, we're going to make a big uh, official thing and bring the soldiers and make this. We're going to make a full thing and I'm, I'm going to anoint him. I'll anoint him, uh, King Solomon, and uh, he's going to be the king after me even though he didn't really have to anoint him because uh, the son of a king becomes a king. But now because there's an argument, so because Adonai was also a son, so he had to anoint him to show who was the king. And that's how King Solomon became the king. And that is the Haftorah for this week. And tomorrow, God willing, we will learn the, we'll continue, we'll finish the beautiful, amazing, powerful, powerful, earth-shaking a speech that the Rebbe gave to the Shluchim, to the emissaries in 1992, 31 years ago, about how the whole essence of Chabad and especially the emissaries of Chabad is to do everything, every moment with all of our power and all of our time to bring Mashiach. Now, have a good day and God willing, see you all tomorrow, 8.15 in the morning.